Welcome back to PCA's Garage. A few weeks ago, we did a video for you to show you how to inspect your brake pads and your rotors to, get, to give you a, an idea or be able to anticipate when you're going to do a brake change. We posted that on our Facebook page. Our Facebook friends gave us some positive responses and uh, lo and behold, we're here today to do the actual brake change. I brought some tools from the house. Uh, we're going to use some common tools as well as a couple specialty tools and we're going to be fitting OEM parts to this Cayenne. Now a brake change on a Cayenne is very similar across all Porsches as well as other makes and models. You're basically dealing with a rotor, um, you're dealing with a caliper, um, brake pads held on a certain way with certain fasteners. Um, in principle it's going to be very similar across all brands but we're going to take a look this isn't a how-to video this is basically to give you an idea of what to anticipate if you're going to try to do the brake change yourself or be well armed with information so that when you pay somebody to do this you really know how much labor is going to be involved and you'll know all step of the way through what they're doing to your vehicle so let's take a look at the common tools and uh, we'll share with you everything else that's on this table all right, so here are the common tools. Most do-it-yourselfers should have this in their garage or in their toolbox. Needle nose pliers, four pound hammer. Most people should have that, but easy to find. Um, a soft rubber mallet hammer. And um, this comes in handy. You may not have one, but this just makes the job faster. And this is just an impact gun to remove the lug nuts off of the wheels. So from there, let's move to the specialty tools. Here what we have is, um, let me just show you. It comes in a set. Um, not particularly this brand, if you can find another brand that's okay too, but these are the triple square drive sockets and these two here are going to be essential for doing the rear rotor change on the Cayenne. So this uh, takes off uh, one bolt that holds the rotor to the, to the hub and then this one uh, removes the bolt to be able to access the emergency brake system. These are punches here. You may consider that a common tool. Um, some don't have it, but you're gonna need these to drive out the pins that uh, hold on the brake pads. This here, anti-seize compound. This is something that you're gonna use to make sure that the next time you do your brake change, things are gonna come off uh, a lot easier and not you know, stick and create a headache for you. This tool here is a brake um, piston spreader. Uh, the reason why is you, once your brake pads wear out, your, your pistons close in on the rotor and you need to push them back so that you can feed in the new rotors. Now this one's, I guess, kind of fancy. It's a quick release um, version that you, you can spread it out and then you know, release it in, in a matter of seconds. Uh, some people use C-clamps, some people use um, pliers or, or even pry bars. Um, I just like this because it's nice and easy and uh, it's, a, it's a cool toy. All right, let's talk about parts. Now these are factory OEM rotors, pads, um, all the hardware that you can get from Porsche. Um, you can follow all the how-tos online and so I also recommend that you replace all the hardware. If you're gonna do it, start with fresh, um, fresh hardware. People may choose to use factory rotors or people may choose to use um, aftermarket ones. That's a personal preference for me and this Cayenne. I think um, the factory uh, setup is the way to go. It's, um, you know, it was designed uh, with this vehicle in mind. So uh, I, you know everything's gonna fit very well. Uh, you, you already know its performance because you've had it on the car before. Um, so that's why we've chosen this. This here, these are all the brake pad sensors. Um, when we were checking or doing the video earlier about checking your brake pads, uh, the sensors right here are what trigger, they wear out and they trigger the dash light. So of course with your new pads you want to put new sensors on. If, you, if your pad didn't wear out so much and if you didn't have the dash warning, you could potentially reuse uh, the brake pad uh, sensors, but I recommend just getting new ones and just again starting fresh. Okay, so our first tip is keeping things straight. And what I mean by keeping things straight is there's different hardware for the front versus the rear, and you wanna make sure that you don't mix them up. So let me just show you quickly. The retaining clips 
are going to be very different. This is the front, this is the rear. The pins that hold the pat of those retaining clips are also different, front versus rear. The caliper bolts, this hex versus the triple square, again, the front versus the rear. And then finally, the brake pad sensors. The front ones are actually quite long compared to the rear ones. So you don't want to mix these up. So once you've got everything as they should be, and what I like to do is I like to put all my parts that are related to the rear next to the rear tire and all the front parts up to the front. So as I'm working, I don't accidentally grab the wrong parts. Little tip. All right, so we're gonna start with the front brakes. Luckily, we have a two post lift here, but you can certainly do this at home as I normally would with the floor jack and jack stands. Um, what I like to do to start with is to make sure you get a little bit of lubrication here on these pins as the old pins, you know, they get dirty and they start to corrode and it's very tight tolerances. So if you can get that a little bit cleaner, when you go to drive that pin out, it's going to be um, a lot easier process. As you can tell, the new ones are very smooth and um, these are quite beat up. What I also like to do is I like to just loosen up the retaining bolt now while you can either have someone step on the brakes to keep the rotor uh, still or you put something to keep the rotor from, from spinning. And we're using our Torx T50 here and I've already broken it so it's ready to go. Then the next step is we're going to remove the brake sensor um, wire. And this simply, this was confusing to me at first. I didn't know exactly how this worked, but there is there's just a, a clip. Now you can hunt down there and try to loosen that clip so it slides off, but I'm just gonna show you what I do. Since I'm gonna throw this away, I usually just break this and it'll pop right off. Makes life much easier. So sit tight and we'll show you how it's done. Okay, so we're ready to drive out this retaining pin here, and this is why you need the four or five pound mallet, because it actually takes a bit of coercion to get it out. So I'm using my punch, throwing it inside. Here we go, and uh, eye protection, it's important. Okay, so this, I gotta tell you, is probably the hardest part about doing this whole brake job is, re is removing these dirty, corroded retaining pins. So we've used our center punch here. You can tell I'm a little bit out of breath because we had to give some pretty good wax with our four pound mallet. But we're at the end here and we're just gonna give a couple more taps. Sound of success. Okay, so we've got the retaining pin out. We've also disconnected the brake sensors here. The, the uh, retaining clip is now loose. What I like to use is a little crowbar here with the pads and just kind of push them apart just a little bit. We'll use our other tool to um, push back the pistons completely. This is just to loosen them up a little bit. A little pressure there, a little pressure there and they should slide right out. That's one. That's two. And as you can see, they are well-worn, so worn that they've 
uh, shaved the plastic and made contact with the sensors and that's what triggers the dash light. All right, so if you take a closer look, I don't know if uh, Dame can zoom in here, but these are uh, six piston calipers. So that's what I like about this one is it's pretty wide, so I can actually get in there. Let's see here. I can get in and reach just about all three pads, I mean all three pistons, and push them back. There you go. Now they're all nice and flush. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use this 21 millimeter socket and remove these uh, bolts that hold the caliper on. We're just going to loosen them and then we're going to tie them up so that you can see this uh, brake line here. You want to be very careful once you loosen these bolts that you don't let the caliper hang with just this here. You want something to support to make sure that uh, there's no undue stress on this brake line here. Now torque is going to be your friend. So we have this pretty large or long breaker bar. Uh, I believe these are set at around 200 pounds per square foot. So it's going to take a little bit of muscle. All right. All right, so we've removed the caliper bolts and now the whole caliper should be able to move out the way from the rotor. And what you wanna be careful with, as I said earlier, is you don't wanna put undue stress onto the brake line. So just be very careful with that. And we have it free now. I'm just gonna drop the caliper bolts and I've already hung one end of my bungee cord. I'm going to come through the caliper. I'm just see if I can get another hang point here. Actually, I'll probably just, here's a nice bracket. I'll hang it right here. Okay. Okay. Now just to be safe, I'm going to do one more. Do the same thing. Pull this one up. Leave it right there. Let's just pull this one. Pull it out here. Okay. All right. So now you can see the caliper is hanging safely. No undue stress on the uh, brake line. We have complete access to the rotor. And we're going to start to remove the rotor. So we've removed the retaining bolt for the rotor and uh, you always hope that you can remove that bolt and the, the disc will just come off real easily. But usually that's not the case. What happens is all the corrosion on the hub typically makes the rotor stick to it pretty well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the rotor with this rubber mallet and sort of rotate the rotor as we tap it and eventually it should break loose and we'll get this rotor off. There it goes. Always keep your hand on the other side because you don't want to drop it on your feet or on the floor. Um, so as soon as it starts to move, you can uh, grab the rudder. There we go. Used rotor is off. All right, so now that our rotor is off, you just want to inspect this, the surface of the hub here. It's actually pretty clean. Um, like I said, there was some surface rust that probably mated the rotor to it. So we're going to go ahead and take some of this anti-seize compound and just rub it on the surface here. All right, and this is a pretty important. After you use this anti-seize material, you really want to make sure you clean your hands or your gloves in this case free from the anti-seize because you don't want it to get on any of your other brake components. So clean it very well, switch gloves even if you have to, but I think I'll be able to get most of it off with this rag. Okay, so we have our new rotor and what you're gonna do is line up the lug nut holes, but also the caliper um, retaining bolt 
So I like to hold the rotors from the edge. That way I'm getting less surface contaminants on it. That's just my little thing. So I'm putting it on, lining it up. There we go. I've got my retaining bolt ready right here with my Torx T50. Ah, but you know what I forgot to do? Is let's put a little bit of anti-seize on this as well. Without even touching the anti-seize. Drop. Snug it up. We're just gonna tighten up a little bit more. Hold on to the rotor. Make sure it's seated really well. And it doesn't have to be extremely tight. Just enough to hold the rotor there. And we're good. Okay, so we have the new rotor tightened, ready to go. Now we're gonna reassemble everything. We're gonna use our new hardware. Something to note is uh, a lot of times when you're working on brakes, you would put Loctite on these caliper bolts, but with Porsche, they've already thought of that and they've already put it on the bolt itself. So everything's gonna go back together. We'll do a little time lapse and uh, speed things up and then we'll move on to the rear brakes. Okay, so now we're gonna pay our attention to the rear brakes, and it's very similar to the front brakes. The only difference um, is we're gonna, going to be pulling a pin which holds the brake pads as opposed to removing a bolt, which we did in the front. And then this is where we're gonna use the special tools that we purchased. These are the triple square sockets, and these are for removing these bolts here, the rotor retaining bolt, and this is the access to the emergency uh, braking system. So that way we can um, adjust the brake shoes that are behind this rotor to easily pull off the disc. And we'll show you a little close up of that later on. And of course, we're going to be utilizing new hardware once we reinstall the caliper. We've already sprayed a little bit of um, oil on here to make sure that these pins slide out nicely and uh, we'll just move on from there. Okay, next we're gonna to need to remove this, these two caliper bolts, one here and one at the bottom. But as you can see, this hose is in the way, so it just simply slides off the bracket, and there you'll have room to be able to get your triple square socket in there and loosen the bolt. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna break the uh, caliper bolts uh, with the triple square socket and this <clears throat> long breaker bar here. Uh, it will take quite a bit of effort, so make sure um, you have a nice long bar. Torque is your friend, so you want to go ahead and get those uh, removed.
All right, so now that our caliper is out of the way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the rotor retaining bolt. And if you're lucky, it'll just pop off. But in most cases, it won't. Um, I think we, we are actually lucky this time. Uh, let's see. Oh, look at that. So it did come off. Now, if you ever have an issue pulling the rotor off and it seems like it's hung up on something, what often happens is the sh brake shoe here will develop uh, a wear line and it'll get hung up on the edge of this inside here. And so remember I told you about the access hole here um, that we removed earlier? What that does, if Damon, if you'll come around, what you'll be able to access through that little hole is this spinner here. And what you can do is you can use a flat, bl flat bladed screwdriver to spin that and pull the brake shoes closer together, therefore away from the surface of the inside of the rotor, and there your rotor will come out nice and easily. So luckily we didn't have to do that. I know on the other side, we did have to loosen, uh, loosen this and draw the, the brake shoes in. So uh, we were lucky on this one. Okay, so before we put on the new rotor, we're just cleaning off the surface a bit. Some of you might want to use brake clean and such, um, but we just wiped it down. And we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of anti-seize compound. All right, here's our new rotor. We're going to line them up with the holes. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to line it up. We're going to line up the retaining bolt first. Just kind of snug that. And what you're going to do next, and this has to do with the emergency brakes. So we're going to move this to the three o'clock position where I showed you that that uh, star wheel was. Okay, so just a little bit lower than three o'clock, you'll find that, that wheel there. And what you wanna do is take a flat blade screwdriver and spin it. And what you're looking for is, had you drawn the brake shoes earlier, when you put on the rotor, you won't have any resistance inside of this rotor. But as you adjust that, the brake shoes will start to expand, and then you want it to just barely snug up against the rotor. You don't want it to make it too tight because it's gonna stay um, applied, and when you drive, it's gonna overheat the rotor. So you just want it to barely touch and feel a little bit of friction so that way when you set your brakes later, your parking brakes uh, or e-brake, um, they'll be perfect. All right, a little tip for you here. As you use the new pin to drive back through, what you want it to do is remember that you're gonna to have to slide this cotter pin back through. So when you place it onto the caliper, make sure this cotter pin hole is facing outside. So when it's time to put the cotter pin in, it'll be nice and easy and you won't have to rotate this pin while it's inside the caliper.
All right, well, there you have it. We did um, illustrated to you what a brake change is like and a rotor change on a Cayenne. Like I said earlier, it applies to most cars and, and how you do it. Uh, we've also gone ahead and bled the brakes on the Cayenne as well. And you can, I'm sure you can find online the process for that. It's pretty simple as well. Bolted on the wheels with our nice shiny new lug nuts and away we go. So we hope you appreciate and like what we've done here. And if there's more that you'd like for us to do at the PCA garage, just write into us and let us know what you're interested in. Mm -hmm.